Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week. It chooses the horror movie, and they discuss it. Today, we're talking about the 2014 film The Babadook, which was directed by Jennifer Kent. I'm your co-host, Alec. Oh, I'm Eric. And finally, we got Emily Banver on the show. Woo, Emily, woo. welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to be on. Uh, I think when you guys first asked me to join, I was like, there's no way. My brother Matt's been on the show a few times, obviously. So I was like, I, I don't know if this can, I don't know if I have the time. And also, I don't know if your viewers are ready at all. So I'm honored to, you know, finally have given in and I'm excited. Well, it's actually really funny. Yeah. So Matt Banover, obviously he's been on for about a year now. He's been a kind of pretty consistent guest. Oh, yeah. And I want to get all four of you on at some point. That's not happening. That's I, not happening. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for this? Guess who just texted me one second ago? Nick Banover. No way. He just wow. texted me. Literally. That's, that's pretty so weird. That's so random. Send him the link. <laughs> yeah. That's so <laughs> no. funny. Wow. I, you know, Emily, the way that I remember meeting you, I think we were like, I want to say like 12 or 13 down in Black Point, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we were spending, you know, summers together. You, your whole family was there. Obviously, like Remy, the Baines, the Curious, so many people. And Eric, you started coming down, you know, to the beach in those summers too. You got to meet everybody. I think I think I met Emily when I was around twelve or so. Yeah, you must have. You must have. And you guys lived pretty close, Alec. Weren't you in Avon? Yeah, both Eric and I are both in Avon. Oh, you guys were both in Avon, right? And so I had been to both of your houses on you know random occasions growing up after we had already met in Black Point. So, and you yeah. threw probably one of the most fun Halloween parties I've ever been to in high school. The most, the most fun. Wow, I'm I'm honored. You, you remember that one where, where Eric, I was? Uh, oh yeah, Jennifer Lopez and Eric was Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> They're back together, baby. We got to do it again, right? Aren't they back? Aren't they item again? Let's do it. Alec. They are. They are. <laughs> oh my God. You're right. We actually could. Holy shit. I like gave myself a cleft shit chin and Alec wore the same dress she had from the uh, <laughs> one award ceremony. It was great. I got to find that picture. Brilliant. Find it. Well, Emily, you, you, you're a huge movie buff, but do you have like a favorite horror film? Uh, favorite horror film. I will say my most recent one that hasn't been topped for the genre would have to be hereditary. It really stuck with me as being really dark. I obviously, you know, I heard your guys take on it and I haven't seen anything since that wasn't quite as unpredictable and disturbing. Mm. So that's, I don't know if it's my top one, but it's like the one that's the most recent one I've seen where I haven't seen anything since that's really disturbed me more and sort of stuck with me more. Yeah, that one's really messed up. My mom, same same thing. She's like, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's the best one I've seen in so long. And um, did you see Midsummer? Ari Aster's Oh, yeah. It? No, I saw it. I just thought it was more predictable. I know that sounds sort of weird, mm. but – and I, I don't get me wrong. I, I love the director. Um, John and I recently saw the movie um, – the Green Knight in theaters, oh, yeah. which was really cool and sort of trippy and not what I expected. But um, again, not a horror film at all, but really. So yeah, no, I don't know. I just think the Hereditary was the one that I, I saw it. And when I, the first time I saw it in theaters, I was like, I couldn't have predicted that. And I'm not whispering to people when I see films, like this is what's going to happen next, but I'm sort of anticipating it going, oh, that's going to be the bad guy. This guy's going to turn on this person. <sighs> and Hereditary sort of threw me for a loop. Huh. So I, I always like that in a, in a movie. So if it can trick you, it's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so it's funny that you said her hereditary because that is similar in a way to the Babadook kind of. It, it's about like family and loss and the way that people deal with that and the way that it like manifests. So sure. this is the first time you've seen it, right, Eric? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What did you think? I'm going to say this. What Emily just said, not that it was predictable, but it was not what I expected. I actually, when I saw the poster to it, I thought it was like this creepy demon guy that comes, which it kind of is. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was going to be some deep south voodoo, like the Babadook coming in from the swamps of Louisiana. <laughs> That's what I was th like. What's the Babadook? That sounds like some deep south voodoo. I don't know. That's what I thought. Doesn't that remind you of like the Baba Yaga from, um, you know, John Wick or is it? Yeah, like... John Wick, right. <laughs> it's a weird like, you know, name for a troll. Yeah. It's a boogeyman, boogeyman name. It's exactly. a boogeyman, but Baba Duke sounds like, oh, the Baba Duke's gonna get you from the deep south. Like I don't, I don't know. know. I think that's this might be a stretch, but I I guess I can follow <laughs> you on this road. Eric, you said that in the last episode when we spun the wheel for the Baba Duke, you're like, is it like Baba Yiga? Like from 
from John That's Baker. funny. I said the same, like the boogeyman. It sounds like this yeah. is kind of a boogeyman. Yeah. Hell of a pop up picture book, if I do say so. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a big pop up picture book fan. Like, I love pictures that just, oh, look at the dinosaur and stuff. But no, this was not <laughs> like that. No, not at all. Yeah, he's very artistic, though, the Babadook, and he he's great binding book skills, so you got to give it to him there. It's like the, the Angry, Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar book. That's what it was. Did we all, like, catch on to... Uh, Eric, you only saw this... You saw it for the first time, and you only saw it the, the one time, right? Correct. Yeah, today. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, I actually did watch it earlier this week just to refresh it, but I had seen it when it originally came out. I, I don't yeah. think I saw it. I didn't see it in theaters, but I watched it with my sister with Becca. But I think after I watched it earlier in the week, I realized a small detail that I I don't it must have gone over my head. And I don't know if you guys caught on to it. But I think she made the book, right? Because they were saying at one point when she was um, the mother, when she was working, and they're like, Oh, didn't you have what what other jobs did you have? She's like, I wrote some articles and some children's books, but oh, no shit. I didn't catch yeah. that. Yeah. Oh my hey, god. I thought shit. I was, like, is that like a terrible spoiler? Should I not be saying that? Oh no, 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 no. We're no, spoiled. We're spoil- yeah, we spoil okay. everything. Great. Yeah, I, okay, good. Yeah, that's true. Holy shit. I never I looked at this from a different way too this time, but I did not pick up on that line. You're that is fucked up. Damn. I know. I had to, I was like, what the hell? Oh, uh, okay. Huh. So maybe it was her. I kind of want to ask you guys this because I guess it does kind of follow up with that. I, this is probably the fifth time I've seen it and I watched it from a different angle this time. I think that she's doing all of it, actually. And I didn't think about the book. And that was the one thing that I really wasn't thinking about. But I think this is just a big metaphor for mental illness, uh, grief, like coping with grief. And then it manifests in the Baba Duke. The only thing I can't think of uh, to, to justify that it wasn't all her is her coughing up the black goo or whatever. I just, I'm like, what is that? Unless it's just vomit and she's seeing it as that. I think everything else is in her mind. Could be like a bad concussion at that point. Like, and she's coughing up blood and stuff. She hit her head like six times. Oh yeah. So. Sam knocked the shit out of her with that baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And she hit her head on the concrete and then he whacked her with that, like, like the backpack, the backapult. Yeah, it. no, that portion of it was all. I was just turning. It started turning into Home Alone. I was like, I don't remember <laughs> this at all. Yeah, she like falls down the stairs and he hits yeah. her with a log and yeah, <laughs> hits the chicken wire. But yeah, Em, you, now you got my brain thinking. Where you know that basement's also where she keeps all her husband's stuff, right? Yeah. All all the stuff. So that's where the Baba Duke is. So that's a good point where like all that grief is built up and pain. And the mental illness probably from it all. And towards the end of the movie, the CTE, because all the time she's hit her head. So that's all down there. And that's what the Babadook probably became like an own, its own entity from all that pain and sorrow. Sure. Definitely. I don't know. Yeah. That's a great, that you really shed some light on this movie. I had no, I didn't pick any of that up. Oh, I, I was shocked when I, when I heard it again, I was like, there's no way. And then yeah. I started thinking, oh, maybe it makes sense. I don't know. One thing I did catch, I don't know if you caught it too, but like, you know how the Baba goes like, Baba Duke, Duke, Duke. There's yeah. a point where after she gets possessed, like, why do you always talk, talk, talking? Like stuff. She started saying oh. the Baba Duke stuff. I caught oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. She had the same sort of cadence and exactly. Yeah, no. I thought that was just being clever and sort of hitting home the point that she has now been sort of possessed by the entity, if you will, or, you know, let the yeah. grief take control. Mm. The one thing I noticed this time, too, that I'd never seen before is right at the end when she's it's Sam's birthday and she's digging up the garden or whatever. I never noticed mm. B- Bugsy's body in the in the dirt. Never saw that before. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. oh, they buried Bugsy there. Yeah. So the camera starts off where it's like in the mm-hmm. dirt or whatever. And then it starts panning up through the dirt and you just see like this white fluff or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, that's Bugsy. And then it comes yeah. up and, and you see her gardening and there's like a black rose above where that where Bugsy's grave is, I guess. I was like, uh, uh, I never noticed that before. That was a rough scene. I actually stopped it at that point and went and get some water. Oh. I want to take a break from this movie. It was like, there's like 20 minutes left. I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> You're a gentle soul. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to watch that movie again just because of that part. I'm like, I don't want to watch that again. Oh. Dog. Jeez, Eric, you really throw in the towel quick, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just don't need it. I just don't need that stuff. Did this Fair. scare you though, Eric? I, I, this scared the shit out of me. I wasn't scared once. No. Really? What? swear to god wasn't that scary i would watch it during the daytime not in like a yeah. theater or anything so that doesn't help oh, plus i'm getting man. like pinged by work on the side but aside from that <laughs> aside from that like i really wasn't scared but uh i, I was gonna say i mean 
you know, that kid starts off like super annoying and like everyone's like, oh, I hate this kid. I'm like, this kid's like really nice. He's really protective. He's a good son when you like look at it from an outside perspective. But his approach, he's got to work on it. He's got to work <laughs> on the whole thing. Like, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, man, this kid would be a lot cooler if he went into it a little better. You know, that's like his whole thing is just like, I'm just going to smash it in the head and do this. It's like, all right, relax. You want to get this thing or not? Let's 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 work together. <laughs> yeah, we're a team. Yeah. There was uh, one yeah. little funny thing that reminded me of you, Eric, is when we were eight years old, we went to the uh, Unionville like carnival oh God, or something the poppers. like that. Are you talking the po- the firecracker yeah. things? And you you took the little firecrackers and threw it in front of the horses. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Your mom. Uh, yeah, there's horses yeah. going by, and I was like oh, trying to not scare the. It was like the biggest piece of shit kid thing to do, and I was like throwing it on the ground. <laughs> And like your mom like grabbed me by the hand. I was like, get over here. Like, okay. Like, and I just like sat down. You not only threw the poppers just like in this movie, but you also had those like fake cigarettes. You're like, poof, poof, like puffing the things. <laughs> my mom's like, who is this? I was kid? such a punk hell, bitch. Eric? It was, it was, okay, that was about my approach. That was my approach. It was punk bitch, like cut it out kid. That was a pain yeah. in the ass. I admit it that. It just reminded me that when he had the poppers, I was like, what kind of kid has poppers? I was like, oh, Eric. Eric had poppers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I had it. Where do you get those these days? Man, he said the internet. I don't know. Yeah, right. He just like had his mom's credit. I mean, nothing makes sense. <laughs> no, where do I get them? That's what I was asking. Oh, oh. Not where. I don't give a shit where that kid got. Where? Yeah. Where the hell did you get? <laughs> well, them? I got them at a car. We were at a carnival, and they were selling them. Which it was their stupid part. There's, there's horses everywhere. You're gonna scare the horses selling that to kids. And well, uh, they should definitely check with the parent because it was just me and my mom and you, <laughs> and my mom would not have done that. So you must have like snuck off and bought them. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, definitely not those fake cigarettes. I probably got them there somewhere too. Yeah, we used to get we used to get cigarettes, the like candy cigarettes from the ice cream truck. Remember they had those? Oh hell yeah! Oh, back at Black Point, yeah, they had those. Do. Yeah. It's not hard. It's not hard to get those those fake drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'm very surprised you weren't scared by this, Eric. But Emily, it got yeah. you good. It actually did. Okay, so I I will say there were a few things that. When I, I thought of the movie and I was like, wow, I'm actually going to be, you know, I'm going to be on their podcast talking about this movie. I haven't seen it since 2014. Uh, so definitely there were a few jump scares for me, but I'm happy I rewatched it because I think my first impression of it was similar to Eric's, which is, oh, it wasn't that scary the first time. Um, I'm glad I saw it. It got a lot of hype at the time, obviously. But when I rewatched it, there were definitely scenes or like little small details of scenes that I thought were really scary. Obviously more than just when she wrung the neck of the dog, but also at one point she was, there was a scene where the mother was lying in her bed and then a voice, I don't know if it was supposed to represent the Baba Dukes or not, but it was this scary male voice and it was sort of muttering in the room. And then it goes, there's someone in your house. Oh yeah. And she like sits up and she, I remember she runs downstairs and her son, Sam is down there and he's sort of like trying to protect the house or something. He's got his little backpack on and she's screaming at him like, why are you down here? But that part I thought was really scary. And maybe a lot of the other jump scares that I'm now thinking of because I, it's now more fresh in my mind or just because it's like, Ooh, it's a, you know, a woman and she's with this incorrigible child and I'm not a mother, but I, I thought it was a little, there were more parts that I was definitely a, a little more scared of, but yeah. the ending I think was where I got a little less scared and it sort yeah. of lost me. And I think that's why the impression the first time I watched it is the same as it was when I watched it on Wednesday. So yeah, the ending is is rough. I think it starts so strong and then it kind of peaks yeah. and then it starts to like, yeah, that last like 10 minutes, you're like, eh, loses it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought that one of the scariest parts and like overall, I didn't find this that scary, but like when she like looks deep into that closet when it's like really dark, like it's like a black mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah, yeah. that that I'd been there where I'm like, my eyes haven't adjusted really well. And like I'm looking into it's like it looks like pure darkness and that this movie did a great job capturing that like dark darkness that like our eyes don't like see sometimes definitely like like at the end too where like where the babadook is like that basement it's just dark like where does that go like what's over there it's just dark it's cool yeah it's like the darkest corner of your mind it's just like i feel like i just feel like the babadook is 
just all of the negativity in your life almost it's just a big metaphor i mean there's the scary part of the movie which is obviously the babadook but there's also that like social isolation like losing your job not having a significant other and not having or having a son that has all these issues like her real life is a horror movie so i don't know i think this movie it freaked me out on the you know because it's scary but also like the idea of like oh my god what if what if this like happened to me this could happen to anybody yeah yeah no that's a good point too to say it's her life is like a horror a horror movie that's a good way to put it i mean like her sister doesn't want to talk to her anymore her sister mm. hates her son she's about she's working a shitty job because she doesn't have her spout like imagine you're driving your spouse to the hospital to give birth and then they die like yeah that's, that's yeah. a thing you know and like uh, all because they were rushing and yeah, yeah. It's so scary. I don't know. I just feel so bad for this woman. Well, I think that scene in the basement where she's puking out all that black gook, I mean, that's like, it's like pretty much like I'm getting rid of all the toxic stuff that's been bothering me and I'm just going to let it go finally and be a good mother. And that's kind of what, I don't know. I think Baba Duke is like, like you're saying, like you're shedding the light on it that I didn't even think about. But yeah, Baba Duke is like poison, you know? Yeah, and it doesn't ever really leave. Like, she still has to, like, feed it the worms or whatever right. in the last scene or so. She's still aware that the grief is there and, what you know, whatever else the Duke represents. Right. But, and mm. But she just sort of keeps it in the basement. She's got all the locks on the basement door now. Her husband's stuff is all still there. So that's, like, her little grief space yeah. that she's sort of aware of and she's able to sort of uh, navigate yeah. Ba that balancing act of being a good attentive mother who's actually present and then also having time to sort of grieve and be alone you know and keep it at bay if you will that's exactly it she's got a lot of baggage and she keeps it in the basement with the baba duke baba duke baggage exactly <laughs> But I love it. It's like you can't get rid of this mental illness. Like you're never going to get rid of the grief of your husband dying. But like just like his son, like you can't get rid of the Babadook. You can't get rid of this. But yeah, yeah you can control it. You can, you know, keep it at bay. Or you could let it in. Or you could just right. let it in and just take, let it take over your life and ruin you. Right. Yeah. Oh, God damn that's it. A, yeah. Dude, that's a really good, that's a really good point. Out. I didn't really catch that watching it. I, I thought know. it was like a demon like haunting this family more than that anything. on the surface on the surface that's yeah. like what it is but if you right. like upon multiple viewings you're just kind of looking at this you're like yo i think this is mm. all in her head yeah. oh know? yeah and that's why everyone calls this a psychological thriller because it's really just about this manifestation of this woman's grief and how she wasn't able to really ever address and come to term or not come to terms obviously she's aware she's very isolated she's aware she, her spouse is no longer with her but yeah. i think she you know holds resentment for the son because you know it's just her doing everything and i think it's a good representation of it it's just really really dark well also her co-worker who clearly yeah. like likes her i totally thought there was another scene where like he turns out to be an asshole or something happens to him because i was like damn like that was a little you know glimmer of light in her life this guy comes over he's got a, like a puzzle or whatever he's got flowers he's trying to be a good guy and then yeah that board game looked horrible yeah no it looked like trash <laughs> i was like what the hell is this from like great grandma's house like what is this shit <laughs> he's trying to be a nice guy like, get, get a good game like, get a good I... game that looked awful i'm sorry <laughs> I mean, he should know better, you know? He definitely Shame. just picked it up at a tag sale on the way there. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. So that was the only scene where I was like, damn, I really thought there was more to that little subplot. Did you guys have a favorite part? Oh, you guys, you got to give me a second to like, okay. I got to sort of backtrack now. Um, yeah, Alec, you go yeah, then. Back to me, yeah. I think the like seriously the first like half an hour is my favorite where you it's so you you see what her life is like with her son you see what her job is like you see what her family relationships are like that whole crumbling at like setting the stage I think that's it but if I had like a visually favorite scene it's when they do all of the television with like those German expressionism films where they're showing the Babadook in the TV and they're all those like old timey movies. Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah, I I really like that. And then really quick, this is my favorite thing. Why? I know it's a horror movie, but like, why does she only have to watch like the scariest movies? There's never like, she's like, I'll put on Family Guy for a minute. There's like not one minute like where she's like, I'm not going to watch terrifying stuff right now. Yeah. Well, I think my house is being haunted or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, I'm going to put some nice stuff on. She's like, no, 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 no. Like B movies from the 50s. But yeah, those are my favorites. Yeah. Just the beginning. And what you got? I guess I would say I actually weirdly liked and i think it's because I, I found it relatable in a really weird way not again that I, i'm a mother or anything like that but 
I liked the scene where I understood, or you got to see her interact with the son and his cousin, um, the little girl, Ruby, and the mother with her sister. I, for some reason, I really liked all of those interactions because it sort of made me, at first I thought, oh, you know, everyone in her life is sort of, she's, she's really on her own. But then you, I watched it again and it seemed like there were people like that really nice coworker guy, yeah. like the neighbor who were like, people were being supportive and, you know, realistic, you know, with her and going, Hey, like your son's crazy, but we're still here for you. So I liked all those interactions, particularly with the sister also, because maybe subconsciously I'm like, Oh God, what if I just have like this terrible uncontrollable child in the future? And you know, how, how's my family going to react to that? So maybe that's why I just enjoyed that. Just seeing that those scenes. And because it really does address the sister does say, Hey, you never really got over what's his name dying. And, you know, she's sort of like, no, it has nothing to do with it. She's like, no, you get really touchy about that. And it's clearly, clearly sets the stage for maybe this isn't like, maybe none of it's really real. And to Alex point earlier, which is maybe this is all her, maybe this is all in her head and she is the bot. Like this is just her. So Mm. I really liked those scenes particularly because you got to see the kid be terrible, but not really terrible. And the mom just sort of just deny everything that eventually was going to get addressed by the end of the movie. Yeah, they're very real, real yeah. conversations. And yeah, it's it's uncomfortable, yeah. especially when she snaps at the, that group of women and she says that one line. She's like, how tragic it must be for you. The gym's closed. And she's like, yeah. losing it. That's the spin because like they, they're mm-hmm. good. They're Definitely. good people and they would never say something like that. And Sam is a good kid. And the daughter is a real mean son of a girl. Like, you know what I mean? What's her name? Claire or not Claire Claire oh man what a they make her to be like and like I know Sam pushes her out of the treehouse which is wrong totally wrong but like he didn't mean to do it he was just so angry because she's such a bad person (laughs) like it's it's yeah yeah. I think it's a kid being true true. there's that but like it just goes to show like everyone's saying Sam's so bad Sam's so bad it's like have you thought that your daughter might be bad like she seems really terrible opening up this right now anyone think that yeah. that's i think that's the play but yeah yeah she's spoiled brash she's like i already have this one yeah oh definitely but yeah, yeah. Real, real quick my yeah. favorite part is all of sam's devices which um. i'm looking at those things i'm like dude you're not hitting a brick wall with that thing and then finally he goes to use everything and it's like <laughs> one two punch like he hits her with the dart like crossbow yep. and then he hits her with the catapult like direct hit in the head i'm like hold, how the hell like one two punch <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. like the old two piece in a biscuit and then he runs away and he's like throwing poppers on the ground and then he pulls the <laughs> rope and she really smacks her head on the basement the ceiling of the basement Lord. or whatever but no she whacks it and i'm like damn this yeah. kid is like kevin McAllister on steroids right now real quick he got oh. such a beating he, he even stabbed her <laughs> oh yeah this kid was kicking ass yeah, I was just like Jesus. But like, yeah, that that was my favorite part because I'm looking at these devices. I'm like, dude, you're not; those things are gonna fall apart before you fire them. Well, he's also six years old. How many <laughs> six year olds can tie down their mother with ropes to the floor? That, like, yeah. dude, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This kid was like, all right, he was. It looked like he was playing like play play time, but no, this he was preparing. Like he was straight up knew yeah. what he was doing. That's what I loved about it. That was my favorite part. It's just him just. Yeah. All right, unleashing all his Baba Duke devices. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What'd you guys think of the uh, Baba Duke, the phone call and all of his noises? Been there, done that. I've seen too much of that in my life. Yeah, I I totally agree with Eric. I think it it was like creepy, but not creepy enough to be disturbing. It was like, ooh, that's a little weird. But I've seen it so many times. So, I'll yeah, say two things I I thought was gonna happen was first of all that old mm-hmm. lady. I was like, oh dude, that old lady's done for. Fine. Made it throughout the whole movie. I was like, oh, Baba Duke's going to just knock her down the, the <laughs> stoop and she's going to be done or something like that. But I also thought the book was going to come back at the end and like maybe be at the old lady or maybe be at Ruby's house. I don't know. Yeah. Like the book, the huh. book seems like such a big part and it just goes away. I think that's probably to, to Emily's point, though, that she made the book maybe. And mm. when she actually went on fire, like she she really did. But but also like it does the Baba Duke never affects anybody except for them you know yeah it, it's only them so I don't think the Baba Duke's really real man yeah no you're right you know you're very right I didn't I did um, not catch that at yeah. all watching this so 
I, I didn't the first time either, but after seeing this is probably the fifth time I've seen it. Yeah. But uh fifth time. Wow. Good for well, it's, it's been out for a while. I don't know. I, I like know, it. I know. You know what's funny too, um we, we talked like before this, like, oh, we just bought a house, we have a dog, like kids someday. I don't know. I feel like if you want to have a kid someday soon, like, ah, you know what, maybe, maybe now's the time. And then you watch a movie like this, it's like, yeah, maybe maybe five more years, maybe ten. I don't know. Like this movie, this movie, I'm like, I'm gonna wait. This kid like kind of pushed my buttons of like how much you have to deal with as a parent like yeah yeah if your spouse wants kids and you don't you guys should watch this movie (laughs) like put it on or we need to talk about kevin so do like a marathon be like oh we should watch oh god back to back double feature a double feature of we need to talk about kevin and this it's like you'll never have kids there's also that funny i mean i just sent you guys the meme of like why can't you just be normal it's like a picture of the american flag (laughs) and then the kids screaming in the background it's like florida yeah it's like oh dude that that (laughs) meme is one of my favorite memes and i had no idea where it was from until this movie really and i was giggling my i thought it was jessica lange or or whatever her name is from american horror story because it kind of looks like that in the meme i was like oh is that what's her name and then yeah i saw this i was like oh my god this is the memes coming the memes coming when i saw this (laughs) you should share that that meme though it's funny yeah oh it's classic good one oh this is a great one i guess does anybody have any last minute thoughts on the babadook i'll say it was um i think anyone should it's not a total waste and it's definitely i think it should be categorized as i'm glad that people think of it and categorize it as a psychological thriller as opposed to like a horror film or mm. anything like that. So mm. overall, I was glad I, I watched it again, but I think we picked it apart enough where, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I, you, you guys give like ratings that often. We do. We do. We, we They're called, uh, instead of stars, it's out of five Keanu's. So out of, you give it a Keanu? So. Go give it a Keanu, Alec. Me? Oh, for me, I'm giving this a four. Four Keanu's. I wow. love this movie. Wow. I think I think in the last twenty or ten years, this is one of the best horror movies in the last ten years. So I'm giving it four Keanu's. Whoa! I'd give it a three point two. It's just good in my mind, honestly. Out of five, I don't give I don't give a lot of high scores. I really don't. Yeah, I would say three, and I'm gonna just stick with three, maybe even less. But I'm gonna actually just Whoa. say three, just so it's not too controversial. No decimals from either of you. Rookie scores. Uh, I can't. I can't. There is one thing that I kind of want to get into aside from the Baba Duke. So over the past, you know, year or so, we've had a lot of like stuff about the Warrens. We've watched uh, the Conjuring movies. We've watched the Amityville Horror. We all grew up in Connecticut and the Warrens have always kind of been this like, I don't know, strangely intertwined with my life a little bit. My mom's going to tell a story about something that happened in, in 1989 with her and, and me, I guess. And then um, Matt talked a little bit about it, your brother, Emily. So I just want to yeah. know, like, do you have any stories or anything interesting about the Warrens that, that you've interacted with them? Sure. I mean, they were really close or uh, were pretty close with my mom and my godfather when they were interested in ghost hunting and, you know, a lot of the um, demonology work that the Warrens were doing at, at the time of sort of their peak. Mm. Um, so I obviously like my family, like Matt has probably already mentioned or said, I've met the Warrens. They would come over to our house to eat. And I feel like I I never went to their like creepy shed where they had all their possessed different, uh, I don't know, like collectible items from all their previous possessions and other people and hauntings and whatnot. So I never saw any of that, but they were over enough. And I don't even know how old I was. It must've been like between the ages of probably, I'd say, like 11 to 14, 15 years old, hmm. um, Matt might be able to tighten up that timeline. But yeah, they always were a really interesting couple. And I think they always, I remember because you guys know the house that I grew up in in Farmington. It was pretty, oh, yeah. pretty fucking creepy. And it was really <laughs> yeah. old and big. That basement, that basement was like straight out of Fred Krueger. Thank you. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. So we live in this old creepy house and I feel like my memories were always with Elaine where she would like go into a room and she would just be like, like, or I'd hear about it from my mom. She'd be like, Oh, you know, we, Elaine and I went to this family, like went to this random house with the team and uh, Elaine, you know, walked around and did her normal, Ooh, this is cursed or, um, and I remember my mom always talking about it. And I think Elaine was really, she like liked whenever she did come to the house, I think she thought of like all of my mom's kids. So like me and my siblings, 
Wrestling's like it's very benevolent. Like, oh, if you saw anything scary, you got to talk to us about it. And like, I want to like hear what you have to say. I feel like she'd always sit with me because I'd be like, oh, I heard something or I saw something and it was really scary. And she'd be like, oh, you know, it's not just that the house is old, Emily. You know, there could be you could be like tapping into some kind of spiritual energy. That's so crazy. She's, I don't know. She's just, she was like a really fascinating woman. I don't really remember many interactions with him. My mom and godfather who were really a part of like the ghost busters slash, you know, (laughs) about that whole like vein of just like searching for the truth and the supernatural. They, They really bought into that. And I always was really fascinated by it because she really did have a presence about her, which I thought was just so weird. And I was like, wow, maybe I just thought, oh, maybe because she's believing me. And I'm like, oh, I see ghosts or, oh, I saw something really scary or I heard something last night. And I think she was she was the first person to be like, I totally believe you. And like, Mm -hmm. let's show me exactly where it was. And as my parents or I should say, as my mom and Joe really got into it, the Warrens would invite random people, usually people who would claim to be um, either possessed or disturbed or their homes would be haunted. Um, sometimes my family would be the family that's like, you know what, we can like house these people and help these people. Like Ed Lorraine, if you have like any like crazy possessed people, like send them our way. Like we will house them so you guys can figure out what's going on. Oh and I was I'm like, looking, looking back on it, I'm like, this is so absurd. Like I would meet some people that were clearly just mentally unwell and we were just like housing them in our house or having dinners with these people. Um, and they were coming from all over. I hate to break this to you, Emily, but I'm pretty sure yeah. your house your house was haunted as shit. Now that you're saying all this, <laughs> like I'm like, so the Warrens oh, yeah, were definitely. multiple times. It's an old like how old is that house? It's got to be like it's in the 1700s. It has a plaque on it. It like can never be like torn down because of how it was like one of the first houses in Farmington. I'm pretty sure in our Jeez. neighbor's backyard there was like a witch hung or something like absurd. Jeez. Oh my god. Okay. All yeah. right. That's uh there you go. All right. I'm never coming uh. over again for dinner. Um Well, it's, it's the house is cold. We we have no we have no yeah. stick in that. No, that's uh yeah. that's great. That's so cool though. I mean, but no, to, to say like hey, the Warrens were over on multiple occasions. Like I think they were drawn to yeah. that house too. I think they were drawn to your house yeah. to some extent. Yeah. For Holy sure. Shit. And that's why she's asking like did you see anything in this house? Like, yeah. okay. That's really cool. I'm yeah. like, thank you for sharing all that. Yeah. Yeah, damn. That was that was way more. That's than a I lot. Thought. That's a so much. <laughs> no, I, I was just gonna be like, oh, I shook her hand once. No. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Wild, wild times. Wild times. Oh, uh, wow. Well, that was yeah. That was amazing. Uh, it's a great way to also, end this Emily, episode. Now I'm gonna. I'm got goosebumps right now. That what? was scarier than the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been to your house. That's damn. why I'm terrified right now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Emily. This was no amazing problem. just to talk about everything and you know, catch up with you a little bit. This is great. Definitely. So, Eric, what do you say you spin the wheel? Well, let's, we shall. So, wait, it's uh, all right. We got the summer wheel ending up right now. It's weird because I feel like we're beyond summer at this point, but we still got a summer wheel. Well, we have, <laughs> there's, what is there? There's a quiet place, too, and there's uh, Hills Have Eyes. So, those are the only One two. Left. two. All right. Let's move. Oh, boy. All right. All right. Let me pull it up. Drum roll. Spinning. The hills have eyes. Nice. Woo! I was hoping this would happen. So we get back to back banners because we have. Oh, I didn't Matt even Bannivers. think of that. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So Matt will be joining us next week for The Hills Have Eyes. And let's just clarify are we doing the 2006 one or the 1977? It, it, it says 2006. We're doing the 2006. Okay, so we're doing the remake. Yes. All right. So nice. let's let Matt know because this has happened few times Twice. with the blocks. <laughs> <No. laughs> all right well thanks again emily and sure we will see thing. everybody next monday with the hills have eyes Woo! Woo-hoo. Woo!